Welcome back to my channel. So today we will continue with chapter 8, Rotational of Rigid Body. Okay, so in this video, we will continue with the questions number 3. A third line of the mass, 20 kg in the park, is supported by the end of 1 meter uniform horizontal beam with the mass 10 kg. Okay, so this beam is 1 meter, meaning that uh, our weight of the beam, 10 kg, Okay, here must going down at the center of the bin. Okay, meaning that here is 0 0.5 meter and the other side also 0 0.5 meter. Okay, and the weight is 10 kg. Yeah? So it's 10 times 9.81. Okay, the horizontal bin is hidden to the pole as shown in the figure. A cable at the angle of 30 degree with the bin helps to support the leg. Okay, so first you must sketch a free body diagram first. Huh? We must identify first how many frosts involved in uh, this bin, uh, acting on this horizontal bin. Okay, so the first one is mg, 10 kg. And the second one is the light, 20 kg. So the light also we have 20 kg. Okay, the third force is the cable because there is a cable, so there is a tension. Okay, and also here, there is a hint here, so meaning that there is a reaction force acting on this point. Total, we have four forces, okay? So the first one is the reaction force, and then we have 10G, and we have another 20G, and there is a tension here, and the tension is 30 degree. We have two unknown, huh? the first one is the reaction force, the second one is the tension. Okay, so number one, determine the tension of the cable. So now if you want to find tension, meaning that we don't want, we want to cancel off the reaction force. So if you want to cancel off the reaction force, we will use this point as our moment. Okay, as I mentioned before, when we have two unknown, usually we will use torque to find, okay, we will use torque to find uh, the force that we need. Okay, so we will take moment, take moment at point, at point A, where we know that if you choose point A, the reaction force will disappear. Okay, so if we choose point A as a reference point, anything also we must refer back to point A. Okay, so since we choose point A, meaning that R will disappear since the radius is equal to zero. Okay, so R settle. Okay, next we look at weight. Okay, for 10 kg. Okay, so here the radius here is 0 0.5. And the weight here is acting downward. This is actually clockwise. Okay, so we know that torque anti-clockwise must equal to torque clockwise. Where 10 g is 0 0.5 the radius, and uh, weight for for 10 kg is 10 times 9.81. This one settle. We have 20 g. So the radius here is one meter and it's going downward. So this is actually clockwise. So we write as the radius is 1 meter and it's 20 G. So 20 times 9.81. Okay, so this one, 20 G setter. We have another uh, tension. Okay, so tension here is the radius is also 1 meter and it's going upward. Okay, so our R here is 1 meter, force is tension. Okay, and then the angle between the radius and the tension is 30 degrees. So we write as sine 30. Okay, so tension is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 times 9.81. Okay, here sine 90 degrees. So I will not write sine 90 because sine 90 is equal to 1 plus 20 times 9.81 over sine 30 degree. Okay. So therefore, we will get tension for the cable is equal to 490 Newton. Okay, next we want to find the force exacted on the beam by the pole. So we want to find the reaction force R. Okay, but we don't know whether R uh, will acting on which angle. Okay, because we don't know. So what should we do is if you want to find the magnitude of R, we must use five steps. So the first step is we use the resultant force acting on x component equals to zero, meaning that force acting to the left must equal to force acting to the right. 
okay so force acting to the left is actually tension okay tension is to the left and also upward okay so our tension uh, to the left is equals to tension um, cos 30 equals to force acting to the right uh, meaning that this is our rx okay so therefore we will get rx rx is equals to 490 cos 30 rx we will get 424 newton okay so this is step one step two we want to find y component so the resultant force on y component is equal to zero meaning that the force acting upward must equal to force acting downward okay so the force acting upward is our ry and also ty okay so ry plus ty equals to 10g plus 20g okay where ry we don't know ty is actually 490 sine 30 equals to 10g 9.81 plus 20g g is 9.81 so finally ry is equals to 49.1 newton okay so this is step two okay step three after we have x component and so we have y component we can find the resultant or the magnitude of the r where we use r x square plus r y square where Rx is 424 square plus 49.1 square and then we square it. Okay, so the magnitude that we get is 427 Newton. Okay, so this is magnitude. So step 4, we need to find the directions. Okay, because we don't know what is the angle. So the angle here, we can use tangent theta equals to Ry over Rx and we model it. Okay, so finally the theta that we get is equals to 6.61 degree. Okay, and 6.61 degree only basic angle. Okay, so step number five is we need to sketch the, the graph. Huh? Okay, to determine at which quadrant. So for example, for at here our x component is positive, y component also positive, meaning that our graph is to the right and going upward uh, because x component positive and y component is positive so we know that it, it is at the first quadrant okay so we can write it as the value or the resultant force is 427 at the angle of 6.61 6 degree above the positive x exit okay so next we go to questions the next questions questions number four and this question number four is a uniform ladder a p with the length of 10 meter and the mass is 10, 5 kg okay so 5 kg here it must come at the center of the the ladder meaning that must be 5 meter and also 5 meter okay so it go down straight 5 g okay so against a smooth wall so the wall here is smooth the height of the end a of the ladder is 8 meter okay so here is 8 meter okay and um, from the rough floor okay so the floor is a rough surface okay meaning that later we need to consider the frictional force so number one determine the horizontal and the vertical force on the floor exacted on the b on, of the ladder okay meaning that first we must draw free body diagram first okay we must draw out the free body diagram so the free body diagram here the first one is 5g and the second one is because here there's a contact surface Okay, at point A. So the normal force here we label as normal force acting at point A. Okay, and point B also there is a contact surface. So here we have normal force acting at point B. And also because this is a rough surface, okay, rough surface meaning that uh, there is a frictional force. Okay, so frictional force is acting to oppose the, the motion. Okay, if there's no frictional force meaning that the ladder will going, they will going downward. Okay, so meaning that our motion is going to the right okay so the frictional force will acting opposite direction okay so frictional force will acting to the left okay so total we have uh, four forces okay so here we have normal force at point b the frictional force weight 5g and there is a normal force acting at point a okay so how many unknown we have uh, we only have 5g and and then we have three unknown uh, na and b and also frictional force okay so the first one they ask us to find the horizontal meaning that we want to find na 
and the vertical meaning that we want to find and b okay so we have uh, three unknown usually when we have three unknown we will use talk to to find the uh, the forces okay so if we choose point b meaning that we can cancel off and b and also fiction so i will take moment at point b Okay, because I want to cancel off frictional force and uh, normal force for B. Because we take moment at point B, so anything we are referring, we will refer at point B. So torque anti-clockwise must equal to torque clockwise. Because we choose point B, meaning that normal force at point B will cancel off, friction will cancel off. Okay, so next we refer to 5G. Okay, 5G we refer to point B. The radius here is 5 meter and is going downward. Okay. So it's actually anti-clockwise where the radius is equal to 5 meter and the weight is 5G so 5 times uh, 9.81 sine okay so the angle here we must find out what is the angle first okay so since the ladder here this is 10 meter and this is 8 meter so the angle theta here is equals to uh, sine theta equals to 8 over 10 so therefore angle theta at here is equals to 53.13 degree the angle between the radius and the weight so we take 90 minus the answer so we will get here is 36.87 degree okay so we substitute 36.87 degree okay so now 5g already settled Okay, last one is the normal force acting at point A. Okay, so with refers to point B, the radius is 10 meter and uh, the force is Na. Okay, so this is actually clockwise. Uh, clockwise, so I substitute here clockwise is equal to uh, radius is 10, force is Na, sine. Okay, the angle here between the radius and the normal force is equal to because zigzag right so it's equal to 53.13 degree normal force at point 18.39 newton okay next one we want to find nb okay so now if we want to find nb the easiest way is we use uh, net force acting on y component equals to zero okay we know that force acting upward must equal to force acting downward okay so since here acting upward only and b and acting downward we have is 5g okay so it's 5 times 9.81 so therefore and b we will get 49.05 newton okay so this is questions for a okay for b Calculate the coefficients of the stacking friction, meaning that we want to find mu. Okay, before we want to find mu, we know that F equals to mu N. Okay, so we want to find the frictional force first. Huh? Where frictional force is X component. So we can use Fx equals to zero, where force acting to the left must equal to force acting to the right. Okay, so force acting to the left is friction. And the force acting to the right is normal force at point A and is equal to 18.39 Newton. Okay, so next we want to find mu, right? So mu here is equal to frictional force over N. Okay, so frictional force here since it's at point B, so meaning that our frictional force is acting similar also at point B yeah? because frictional force at B, so normal force also acting, we must take at point B okay you cannot take at point A okay so frictional force we have 18.39 and the normal force at point B is 49.05 our mu will get 0 0.375 okay so there's no unit for mu okay we will continue with the next video rotational dynamic okay thank you class bye